Hi, I'm Zor. Welcome to Unizor Education. Um, this is the lecture number four in a mini series about uh, different inverse trigonometric uh, functions. This is about arc cotangent. Now, before talking about arc cotangent, as usually in case of inverse functions, I have to talk about the original, the, the cotangent function, and then we will talk about how to define its inverse. So the definition of the cotangent is traditionally cosine over sine. So let's build the graph of this thing. So first cosine, which is this, cosine is symmetrical relatively uh, to the y-axis, it's an even function, and this is pi over 2, this is uh, pi, and this is 3 pi over 2. This is minus pi over 2, this is minus pi, minus 3 pi over 2. So that's my cosine. Now, sine starts with 0 and goes to the maximum of 1 here, and then goes down, and then goes to minus 1. Here, whenever it's 0, it's minus 1, then it goes to 0 and the plus. So that's the sine. Now let's divide one by another. Well, let's start from 0, uh, function cotangent at 0 has uh, an asymptote because the denominator is equal to 0. Now, both numerator and um, denominator are positive, which means it's a plus infinity. Now, uh, the next point is this one, and that's where the cosine is equal to 0 and sine is equal to uh, 1. This is cosine and this is sine. So the result of the division will be 0. So we will have this. And then I have another asymptote at pi when sine is again is equal to 0. Now cosine is around minus 1, which means starting from this point, um, the result, the cotangent, would be negative because the cosine is negative and sine is positive. So it will go like this. Now, obviously, it period, it, it, it's periodically re repeating itself, so I'm not going to draw anything. What's important is we have to choose the, uh, the domain for the new function cotangent where um, we can actually find out what's the angle knowing the value of the function. Because if I have all the components, if I have the function cotangent defined everywhere from minus infinity to plus infinity, then we have uh, no um, way to determine what's the angle if we know the, the, the function. So we cannot inverse the function. Because for every value, I will have more than one well, actually, infinite number of uh, angles, cotangent of which is equal to that value. So what I have to do, I have to reduce my domain from all the um, real numbers to only the place where I know that the function is inversible. And in this case, the perfect area is from 0 to pi. So let's wipe out everything else. So we will define a brand new function, which we'll also call cotangent, but it's a new cotangent, which is defined only on this interval, from 0 to pi, not including the boundaries, obviously, because the function is undefined at 0 and, and at pi. Now, what's the range of this function? Well, obviously, all numbers from zero from minus infinity to plus infinity. 
Now, here on this particular domain with this particular range, we can invert the function. We can define what's the um, inverse function because for every value of the function, we have only one unique value of the argument. So from y, we can find out x. So in this case, we can talk about inverse function called arc cotangent of x. Now, its domain would be the same as range of this function, which is y, which is from minus infinity to plus infinity. Now, its range, what's the values the angle can take if the values of cotangents uh, such and such? Well, from 0 to pi. We have already defined this. Now, the question is how the function looked like. Well, we know that the graphs of the function and its inverse are symmetrical relatively to the angle bisector. So we have to turn uh, our graph uh, around this line. So how would it look? Well, these two asymptotes um, would we would be turned to the horizontal one. So we'll have, let's wipe out our sine and cosine, which we don't really need anymore. And this one. Now let's just draw. So this um, asymptote would turn into the horizontal asymptote on the level of pi. OK. Now, this piece would go into this. This is pi over 2. This is pi over 2. So it would be like this, approximately. So this is a graph of the function arc cotangent. I um, draw it based on the symmetry between the graph of the function and the graph of the inverse function. I have reduced my original function, cotangent, to the area from 0 to pi, where it's monotonically decreasing, from plus infinity to minus infinity, as the angle goes from 0 to pi, not including 0 and pi, not including the boundaries. And the inverse function has the domain uh, which corresponds to the range uh, of uh, the original function. The range is all real numbers. And the inverse function has the range which corresponds to the domain of the original function. So that's the definition. And again, you can actually express it in words. So what is the angle cotangent of which is x? That's basically the definition of the inverse function. And again, from 0 to pi, you can always determine what exactly is that particular angle. Well, that's it. That's the brief introduction into what function arc cotangent is. Um, I do recommend you to go to um, unizor.com website, read again the notes for this particular lecture. Um, it's, it's really simple. All we really have to understand is the general behavior of the function its range, and its domain. That's basically it. Uh, all the problems related to this will be in the future. Don't worry about that for now. So thanks very much, and uh, good luck.